Well, hello students and welcome to LW305 for 2024. Uh, I'm your online course coordinator, uh, David Naylor. Uh, I recently became Dr. Naylor, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about myself in a moment. First, uh, I wanted to extend a big welcome to all of you from wherever you're viewing this from. I hope you're well, and I hope you're feeling fresh for semester two. It's a shortened semester, and so there's a lot for all of us to pack in. Uh, today, I'm going to go through the week one lecture slides, uh, and I'm also going to go through your assessment structure in a little bit of detail, and there'll be some more details about your assessment as the semester goes on, as well as uh, available on Moodle. Let's begin. Okay, so this is me. Uh, I recently graduated from the ANU with, uh, at the Australian National University in Canberra uh, with a PhD from the School of Regulation and Global Governance. My supervisor was Professor Miranda Forsyth, who was teaching criminal law at USP back in the early 2000s. Uh, and today is probably one of the foremost scholars in the Pacific uh, on legal pluralism, uh, witchcraft and uh, sorcery and related violence uh, and intellectual property and, and other things. She's quite amazing and you'll probably see her name in a lot of places. Uh, my research is focused on lawyer regulation in Pacific Island countries. Uh, I specifically look at Fiji, Kiribati and Vanuatu. And my thesis explores how lawyers identify what it is to be a good lawyer, how lawyers in the region learn to become good lawyers, what the sources of influence on their conduct and behavior is, and how they navigate any you know, conflicts between these different sources in practice. And finally, how regulators can maybe better support lawyers to be competent and ethical. I've been a lecturer at USP since 2015. Uh, I was based at the Lothala campus or Statham campus from 2015 to 2018, uh, where I was teaching criminal law one and two and courts and dispute resolution one and two. I've been teaching current developments in Pacific law uh, since then, and uh, I've been enjoying it. Uh, I'm quite keen to get back to face-to-face -face teaching, let's see. Uh, I did love my time in Fiji. Uh, I got married in Savu Savu and uh, I've been back for quite a few visits and I'll be back again. Uh, one of the relevant parts of my history perhaps is that before I became an academic, I spent about eight or nine years as a senior policy lawyer at the Law Council of Australia. Uh, and that's the peak body of the Australian legal profession. And it makes submissions to government on laws and policy, ranging from human rights to trade law to tax law reform, you name it. I was part of the international division there uh, and worked a lot on, on lawyer regulation and trade agreements uh, and public international law but also uh, on matters affecting overseas aid and development and the Pacific. Uh, so I spent uh, oh, six, seven years as administrator of the South Pacific Lawyers Association, which was formally launched in 2011. And that's a, a peak body for all the law societies in the region. Uh, Perhaps not in the same sense as the Law Council is a peak body for all the law societies in Australia. They're all members of it. But uh, it's, it's certainly another regional uh, group. And in that role, I, I spent a lot of time writing submissions on law reform, reviewing laws, writing policy papers, briefing papers. And I guess I've also spent a lot of time thinking about current developments in law in the Pacific. Uh, as these were areas that I monitored and, and wrote about a lot. And so 
Throughout this course, I might refer to some of my own materials from time to time as examples. There's a lot of excellent material out there and I'll refer to that too. Uh, but, uh, you know, I come to this course with some of my own experience uh, and practices and some of the skills that this course is trying to teach you. So hopefully uh, I can continue to learn from all of you and you can learn something from me uh, in the process. Uh, if you want to contact me, this is the best way to do it. Write to me at my USP email address. Put LW305 dash in the subject line. That's really helpful because I run a filter on my emails to filter all of the important things from students in LW305 into a folder that I can easily read. Last year, I got over 1,800 emails on the all staff, all students email address at USP. And that's just too many for me to be able to process. So I filter all of those to a different folder. And I like to be able to just see the ones from students and, and people in the class. So do please do that and, uh, and write me something sort of polite and direct and, and straightforward. Okay, there's a few important documents uh, in this course. Your course outline and assessment portfolio, which I'll be going through in just a second. Uh, and there's a number of other documents that are up on Moodle, which you can review. The referencing guide is a bit dated, but it is fairly important to use a referencing style and be consistent. Courts expect it. The Academy expects it. I expect it. I will try to check your sources if they're non-existent or don't say what you're claiming they say. I'll pull you up on it. Uh, okay, so in terms of the course materials, uh, Moodle's become a mess since 2023. I'm not sure how to make it look better. Some, some courses look better. I'm, I'm not the guy. I'm going to try to get your topic notes and class notes and readings out on Mondays your PowerPoint slides and lecture recordings on Thursdays, and there'll be other recordings that'll come out from time to time. Those will probably be pretty useful. Uh, sometimes they will be me going through the readings. It might be an older recording. Uh, sometimes it might be just me linking to something that I think might be relevant or interesting. It might be a podcast, uh, which is all completely optional, uh, but is provided for uh, for your self-guided learning experience, shall we say. Uh, you can also download the free textbook there. We won't be following the textbook religiously, uh, but it's a really relevant and important work, uh, which is probably still very relevant today. Uh, and certainly uh, as budding lawyers and people interested in law and society in the region, uh, it's a very, very good starting point. The lectures will combine new material like this and older material. Uh, sometimes I might have said something way better than I, you know, ever thought I could ever again. Um, but more often than not, uh, what I've said is probably good enough. Uh, and the readings um, and lecture content might not have changed so much. And, uh, you know, uh, but I am working on updating some of the material. So, you know, hopefully what you end up getting out uh, of this course uh, will be more than adequate to uh, help you guide yourself towards the learning outcomes and uh, the, the objectives for the course. This is the overall structure. In the first half, our focus is more on law reform. Uh, and ideas of development and modernization and some of the challenges with that and introduce you to some ideas of post-colonialism and social theory, a lot of which you might have had packaged up in other courses, in other units, uh, in other degrees. Uh, and the only reason for combining it here is to emphasize law and lawyers and the role of law in, in these processes, uh, which might not have been 
uh, as emphasized in, in other places you've learned it. The second half of semester focuses on what I like to call beyond law reform, um, looking at some of those different ways that uh, we can understand how the law works or doesn't work. Uh, you might have a law, but nobody complies with the law. Why? There might be some regulatory measure you need. You might need funding and support. You might need other things to create an enabling environment for that policy. Uh, there might be all sorts of other ways that we can sort of understand how law works. We can apply case studies. We can study how a law works for particular people in a particular place and use that to understand how we might need to adjust the law or the way we uh, implement the law. I noticed that we have a special lecture on the analysis of a law paper in week 12. Uh, because your uh, assignment this semester is due a little earlier because of the shorter semester, uh, I'll probably record that separately and we'll put that earlier uh, in week nine or week 10. And uh, you might just have no lecture in week 12. We'll, we'll see how we go. All right, let's move on. So this is your assessment structure. I'm not going to go through it here in great detail because I will go through the portfolio, but you have two written assignments, uh, a position paper and an analysis of a law paper. These are different activities. Do read the portfolio. It is very important. Uh, you also have 10% of your assessment comes from forum participation, which I will discuss. Uh, and also from posting in the forum. So you have a 10% post that you must do in a particular week. You've been allocated to a week uh, and you must participate in the forums each week and engage with other students. If you're the person who posted for that week, you're going to be marking other students using Moodle. And I'll tell you more about that. Okay, so I guess starting with the discussion forums, I might just take you to a different uh, document. Just give me one moment. Okay, so this is your assessment portfolio and we're gonna start off here by going through the forums and then I'll work through the position paper and analysis of a law paper. So your instructions for the discussion forums are that, well, firstly, there is the forum post. So let's start there. You get six marks for part one. Part one, you need to identify a current issue must be between 21 and 2024 uh, that you're interested in. Now, lots of things are current issues. Issues get recycled from time to time, but I want you, you know, we're, it's current developments and to ensure that we're dealing with current developments, you know, we want you to rely on media or things which tell us that it's current. This issue is live. That's what we're debating and dealing with uh, that you can point to from the last few years, yeah? So we're not really worried about, you know, uh, the 1950s, 60s, 70s Cold War and its impact on the Pacific. We might be interested in the brewing Cold War between uh, the US and China uh, and how that's impacting the Pacific in the global security situation. But, you know, there's a lot of evidence in the media that we can point to to say that this is a current issue. Okay. So it can be any issue, social, political, environment. Uh, you can be looking at land law. You can be looking at uh, uh, sea level rise and climate mitigation strategies. You can look at anything. For the forum post assignment, you need to find three online news sources. They can be rubbish sources, but you're encouraged to not find rubbish sources. The point is, 
you're sharing this with your colleagues in the class to say, hey, look at this. This is actually an important issue. And you want those sources to be informative. Um, probably you don't want them to be too biased, but maybe one of them is a report from a, you know, an interest group, an Amnesty International or, or whatever it might be. And you want probably to use those sources later on when you're writing one of your assignments because your forum posts can be on the same topic as uh, your analysis of a law or your position paper. And I encourage everybody to do that so that it sort of, you're not doubling up your research and work so much throughout the semester. You have to include hyperlinks to those sources. Uh, you have to divide your post into about 250 words, which introduces and explains what the issue is. And about 400 to 500 words where you talk about your position in relation to it. So try to be neutral in the first part. You know, this is the issue. These are the interests that are affected. This is what's happening, etc and then state your position on it and make an argument about addressing that issue or addressing part of that issue. It's just an opinion, it's an argument, but I wanna see you supporting that argument uh, with clear reasons that are logical. Uh, and you know, I encourage debate in the forums. You should be trying to challenge each other respectfully, uh, uh, so long as you can maintain that respectful engagement because this is a learning environment if you can't make mistakes here if you can't you know have that shame of not knowing all of the answers or not having the best developed arguments based on the the latest research uh, and somebody else is correcting you that's probably better to happen in the forums of this course than out in public in you know in your real life where you're going to curl up into a little ball. So, but don't be cruel, don't be mean, don't be misogynistic, don't be a lot of things. Be respectful and polite. Uh, however, you are able to do that. Okay, so that's the post. Oh, a key thing obviously is part C here. You need to then raise questions for discussion, okay? Uh, for students and that's because you're going to lead the discussion so I'm going to assign you a role in Moodle called forum discussion leader for the week and that will give you access to grade students in that forum for the week uh, hopefully it won't give you any other special powers in Moodle um, we had some teething difficulties last year and you know you might well find that you can see or access things that you maybe don't normally have access to as a student. Uh, if you do, I'd be really grateful if you could tell me, because obviously we don't want other students to be able to see your marks or you know edit something that they shouldn't. Um, and obviously if you're tempted to do that, you should know that Moodle logs everything that you do, that anyone does, every link you click, uh, every uh, every button you press, every new window you open, uh, there is a log created of it in Moodle that I can access uh, and filter by you uh, between the date range that you had the authority and, and there's only going to be a few of you that do. And so, yeah, don't be tempted to do anything silly if you discover that there's a problem, tell me so that I can try and get the Moodle team to fix it so that we can continue this because you know it's nice for you to be able to lead discussion grade students on their posts invite your friends to make posts on your forum so that you can give them marks for the week and so on uh, you will assign a mark uh, of zero a half one one and a half or two and that will scale automatically to a mark out of one for that week okay so six marks for what you write four marks for how well you actually lead discussion for that week. Some topics are more interesting than others, and sometimes you'll have 20, 30, 40 replies, 
and somebody else has four or five or six. I will take that into consideration. You don't get more marks for more comments and more engagement, but uh, the you know whether you were monitoring that discussion or at least trying to engage people uh, will be noted. Whether you actually marked people during the week or not will be relevant because uh, you know anybody that you don't specifically grade and assess, I'll have to. Uh, and so part of assigning you these roles is so that we can actually share some of the responsibility for the quality of the discussion uh, in the course. And obviously uh, I will be moderating marks at the end of semester. You've all been assigned a week of the semester uh, and that is the week that you will be discussion leader in. Uh, it will close now, not at the end of week two, I believe it'll be at the end of week three. Uh, and you will be able to choose weeks a little bit until then. Uh, currently, all the MLS students are included in the groupings for reasons beyond my control. Uh, but that's all getting sorted this week, I hear. And so that will be the final list of the week you're in. After the end of next week, there is no changing. Uh, we sort of don't have the slack in the course for lots of moving about. Um, if you miss your week, you missed your week. That was the week you were due to do it. So you're responsible for your assessment. What you will do, and there will be, uh, I think there's, well, there's currently an example for week two and an example will go up for week three of a new discussion thread in the discussion forum. You'll give it a subject line. You'll have drafted up your forum, however you've drafted it, and you'll submit it uh, once you've formatted it to your satisfaction. The breakdown of your marking criteria is here. Uh, if you make your forum post on the Monday, and not on some other day of the week, you gain two marks, two marks, two whole marks. Uh, if you complied with the assessment instructions as we went through, the section that explains it, about 250 words, a section that gives an opinion and discussion, you include three references with a hyperlink, etc. that's two marks. If what you wrote is clearly expressed and logically argued, uh, not that it's right, who's right, what, what's right mean, then that's two marks. If you effectively lead discussion, that's two marks. And if you actually assess everybody, that's two marks. Each week you will earn a scaled one mark. It'll be marked out of two and there's reasons for that. Um, for participation. So if you get on the forums each week and write in the forums, comment on other people's posts, engage in discussion, five, six different people might give you half a mark or a mark or two marks for your contribution, which will ultimately become a mark out of one. So uh, if you got more, two or more, you'll get a mark out of one, you'll get one. Uh, if you get one or less, you'll end up with a mark of a half. That's sort of how it'll work. Um, quite easy then to get full marks for participation just by showing up and participating. Uh, don't be too tempted to use ChatGPT uh, or other LLMs to reply to other students. Uh, pulled up a lot of people on that last year. I'm sure it's going to get more common. Uh, we'll talk about AI in a future lecture, but uh, it's a really bad look. Uh, use your own head. That's what you're here to train. Um, okay. And then for people giving marks, this is sort of uh, roughly what you can expect uh, to be marked on. Um, okay. And so let's move on then to your position paper. If you have any questions, obviously, about any of this, please 
email me, uh, get in touch, request a meeting, uh, would love to chat. Your position paper, I'm calling it a reactive policy paper. So this is interesting. This In this assignment, you're going to choose a recent bill, and that's a bill, not an act. You're going to choose a bill that proposes to introduce a new law or amend an existing law. Ideally, it's a bill that has not yet been implemented. Uh, if it has already been enacted, you're going to have to write as if it hasn't yet. Um, now that could get complicated and it could mean that you've got lots of additional material to sort of rely on uh, that came out after, after the fact. I kind of want you to do it on a, an emerging issue, a new bill, a proposed law. Um, but if it is on something that you're very interested in from the last few years, a bill that's, that, that was implemented, then I want you to not rely on sources beyond the date of the bill, right? Uh, so if that makes sense. I don't want you relying on some submission that an NGO actually produced in relation to that actual bill and to just be ghost writing it. Uh, I'll probably pick that up if you are. Um, I want you to be writing your own position paper uh, in relation to it. So what you're going to do is you're going to invent your own NGO that has a particular standing or interest in the social issue that the bill seeks to address. What do I mean by that? The Fiji women's rights movement has uh, an interest in women, women's rights, law, law as it impacts women and children, etc. The a, a Council of Churches has an interest particularly in how laws might affect people within their parishes, people, uh, maybe it's people who are of low socioeconomic status, maybe it's people who have particular beliefs. Maybe it's people who go to particular churches. Maybe it's uh, people located in particular areas or of particular ethnicities. Uh, if you're a lawyer's alliance of, in, you know, uh, the alliance of environmental lawyers, perhaps the issue you're dear looking at has to do with climate change or laws relating to environmental protection. And so that environmental protection bill, you're an NGO that's interested in environmental protection. That's what I mean by a particular standing or interest. Uh, just don't copy a real NGO and remember that political parties are government organizations. They're not non-government organizations. You can't be a political party. What you're going to do is write a background You'll see examples in public submissions of a background of an NGO, and you're going to do that for your NGO. So think about who you are, where you came from, how you were formed, um, you know, have a, have a real good brainstorming sessions and think about what your organization is and what you're about, and then condense all of that into a paragraph. We don't care who you were founded by in the background, we care about you know, what the entity is, what your interest is, and what you do. You are going to be a member of a policy team working for that NGO, and you're going to be drafting a paper on behalf of your NGO, which explains your NGO's stance on that bill or specific provisions of it. So it might be a law to... Uh, or a, a law to, uh, let's say, restrict movement in Suva during a pandemic. And you're going to identify that particular bill and you're going to identify the specific provisions which you think are in breach of people's freedom of movement or human rights or whatever it might be. And you're going to state your position and put arguments for uh, what it is that is objectionable or is wrong uh, or that you disagree with or that you actually agree with uh, and provide an analysis which draws from evidence and other sources and data 
which might actually support your argument and make it stronger, not just some opinion that some person in a, a policy team came up with. You're an NGO, you've got resources, you've, you've done studies, you've found things, you've relied on other people's studies and data, and you've gathered this information and you're able to say that, you know, this approach to uh, reforming domestic violence laws doesn't work in other countries and it won't work here. Or it could only be effective if there was better support for police, police training, whatever your position or argument's going to be. You will need to include that background section uh, that must go before your introduction. You must have an introduction. Maybe the heading is just introduction. Uh, you should have a body to your paper, obviously. There's a recommended structure up on Moodle. Uh, recommendations. You must have a recommendation section. And in my mind, that must come after your introduction. The background just tells us who you are. The introduction tells us about the bill, the issue, and as a person reading it, the person whose mind you're trying to influence and change in relation to that issue, you want to tell me straight up, we make three recommendations that the bill be repealed, that the bill uh, you know, not, be, uh, not enter into force, that it be amended, or that provision 17 be amended in certain ways. You're going to include references and a bibliography. And you cannot do your analysis of a law paper on the same topic or issue. So these must be on so these two papers. The two things you'll do this semester can, must be on different topics. Your forum post, it can be on the same topic as either of these, but only one of them. Okay. There is your marking criteria. Uh, again, what I will do in a future week is provide some examples of past papers and uh, we'll go through them uh, in a future lecture. Uh, I see a typo at the top of this. That's a little embarrassing. Uh, analysis of a law. I might amend this. Um, leading policy research. Okay, so this is your second assignment. Um, your plan for the assignment is due at the end of week eight, and your final paper is due at the end of week 11. I will turn around your plans within a week. Your other papers, I'll try to turn them around within two weeks. Uh, but your plans, I will turn around very quickly for you with feedback so that you can get on with your paper. The difference between this assignment and the first assignment is that for this, you will choose a piece of legislation, not a bill. You will choose a piece of legislation. It's already law and it should be a law that hasn't been functioning well based on some sort of evidence. You know, there's still people getting bashed, there's still killings, there's still drugs. So the drug law doesn't work. So the laws on murder don't work. So the laws on domestic violence or something don't work. Whatever it is, whatever you decide to justify, it has to be legislation that covers an area that people say it's not working well or well enough. And you're going to draw from uh, the Guy Powell's Minimum Standards Framework, which we'll talk about later in the semester, to analyse the shortcomings of that legislation. So that's going to mean you're going to look at key metrics uh, or ask key questions about the law uh, to help you pinpoint why or how the law is not working well. And I'll explain that in, in future, uh, future lectures. And then you're going to spend the majority of your paper discussing strategies to improve the law based on your analysis of why it's not working. You're going to come up with strategies on how to make it work. They should be evidence-based. They should be supported by perhaps comparative approaches with something done elsewhere preferably in the region, not just Australia or New Zealand or, or somewhere. Uh, you're going to maybe draw from cases or case studies 
of how this sort of thing might have worked. You're going to draw on other data or academic sources or reports to justify your strategies for strengthening or improving the performance of the law. Note that I'm I've, so law reform could be one of those strategies, but it is not the only strategy. And law reform takes time, might take three or four or five years to change the law. So, yes, maybe you're saying, well, this law's not functioning well and we need to reform the law somewhat, but we also need to strengthen how the law is implemented and how it performs in practice. And so those are the strategies I want you to sort of really get stuck into. You can identify law reform, but what about beyond law reform? What will work now, tomorrow, next month, next week, not in five years time, and even in five years time? You might change the law, but if you didn't think about why the law isn't working and how to get it to work better in practice, how to implement it, then that new law probably won't work in the future as it already doesn't work now. This will be an essay and it should have an abstract uh, which you will do a draft of for your plan. Uh, include footnoted references, which you should always be doing, and uh, there should be a bibliography or reference list at the end. The plan is due on the 22nd of September and the final paper is due on the 13th of October. Uh, if you need an extension, you need to write to me uh, well before that because uh, I might have very little capacity to deal with emails at that time uh, and uh, because I'll, I'll be traveling overseas and uh, I may be on an international flight and crossing date zones several times. Uh, so I might talk about that in a future announcement. But if you're not going to make Sunday, you better let me know ahead of time. After the fact is too late. There's email. You should be able to access email from almost anywhere. Uh, if there's a reason you couldn't do that, you should email me as soon as you can. For your plan, you must include an abstract uh, and I'll discuss in future weeks some resources on writing abstracts, but you can also do some re uh, research of your own. An abstract is not an introduction. An abstract is like a mini essay and I'll give you feedback on your draft abstract uh, and that might help you for your uh, for your ultimate assignment. Why am I making you write an abstract? Well, law students don't usually have to do abstracts, but it's a very difficult exercise to, in a single paragraph or a paragraph in a little bit, summarize an entire argument that you're going to spend thousands of words making. Right? What is the essential argument that you're making? What does this paper do? This paper argues that, blah. And that's really hard. It's hard to say a few words. It's easy to say a lot of words. Look at me. I'm doing it the easy way. So I want you to practice that skill because when you're writing submissions in the future, when you're writing a speech, when you're standing up before a judge, relying on prepared notes, anytime you're going to open your mouth, what people want to hear is the most succinct version of what you have to say. If they have questions, they'll ask. So let's practice that skill. It's also a good skill for future academic writing. I want a short plan. It's a I want a dot point summary. I'm not going to look at all of your draft arguments. It's a plan. If you've written more, excellent. But I want to see the plan. What's the outline? What's going to go in each section? What are the references and resources you think you're going to use? Do the best you can. For your analysis of a law paper, this is your marking criteria. Uh, I won't go through it in detail, 
But I do want to emphasize that you should read through this and understand what gets you into the higher grades. Attempts to critically in, uh, analyze ideas and arguments may not engage in critical analysis, failure, right? Use the content from the course, the theories, the uh, approaches that we discuss. Have credible sources. Yes, 10 minimum. 10 minimum gets you satisfactory. You're writing 2,000 words on uh, uh, the way a law should change. You better believe that there's material and information out there for you to reference. Uh, the structure, the communication, and so on. Okay, so that's all I want to talk about in terms of your portfolio. Again, if you do have any questions, uh, please get in touch, uh, attend consultation hours. Um, I don't know that you'll have a pro you, you have a problem unless you communicate that to me. You'll find that I, I'm very happy to talk with you. I'm very happy to write back and forth via email, and I'm very happy to listen and to be supportive, but Again, we all have so little time, and so, uh, you know, let's help each other, uh, you know, get the outcomes that we want. If you need an extension, write to me early. If you're struggling, let me know. If something's happening, there's a death in the family, you've got a medical issue, let me know. If it's affecting your ability to do the course, let me know, because the sooner you do that, the sooner we can discuss any additional support you need or extensions you need uh, or what your best interests are. Okay, so we're going to switch back to PowerPoint here. There we go. Okay, so uh, we're back to how to study this course uh, and in brief, be organized. Get a copy of everything that you need write down the due dates, have a calendar, have a plan, structure your week and plan that you'll procrastinate, plan to take a day off, plan to have an afternoon playing or two playing sports, plan for that time that you can't study because you have community or church or other commitments, uh, plan. Start using a diary because as a lawyer, all of your appointments will be registered in a diary. And if you don't make your client's meeting, they won't be your client very for very much longer and they won't be paying you money and uh, you won't be a very good lawyer. So get used to a diary. Uh, week one, uh, online forums, there's a discussion forum, introduce yourself, it's not assessed. Uh, there's also a week two forum which provides an example uh, forum post for the accessible forums which start from week four. Otherwise, uh, that's all I have to say for the first week. Uh, again, if you do have any questions, let me know, email me. Uh, I'm always happy to hear from you. Bye for now.